before I even get into this video, I have been playing a good amount of the new season of Overwatch. I'm ass, obviously. Hanging out in like silver goldish. Not great. I think this is probably a very good season of Overwatch compared to where it's been lately. But I mean, you know, I'm curious I'm curious to see what like a, a page like this will say. Biggest change to Overwatch since Roll Q or 5v5, but the clips are all about one thing. So the the red right there is the hit scan bullet. And the green is what you're gonna see in season nine. What? <laughs> what the f is that, bro? Bigger projectiles in Overwatch 2 season nine patch are dominating the discussion. And with clips like those, rightfully so. Okay. I mean, I'm accurate on my screen. See? On my screen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not missing. This is just my amazing aim. <laughs> but the game really has changed in serious ways, and hitboxes are only one part of that equation. So, how worried should you be? Listen, listen, I think, obviously, <laughs> the hitboxing stuff that came out in the beginning of the season was pretty embarrassing. But I think, overall, if you are looking at this season objectively longevity of the game brought people back all these kinds of things i think it i think it's a good season i think the reason too that making those hitboxes maybe a little bit too iffy is you're going to bring back that majority of your player base right which the majority of ranked games generally hang around that silver gold almost kind of like exactly where i am and they're going to stick around and play more if they're seeing a bigger number on the screen if they're seeing that they're doing 20,000 damage a game and getting 30 elims, they're going to be a lot more likely to come back than 15, 11,000 damage, 10 eliminations. Like they're, they're not going to want to come back and play that. First of all, people just see bigger number, better game. So I do think from overall, objectively, it, it was a good season. They need to patch some things, and I'm very curious to see kind of what the midseason patch will look like. But the start to the season brought a lot of eyes back. I think Overwatch is in a good place. Oh! I know I just said that and then we saw that, but the, this, this was right at launch, okay? Oh! 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 You're not in charge anymore. Okay, so Season 9 has now dropped in Overwatch 2 and with it a whole slew of changes. Now, for some people, new content on its own will always hit different. But your shots literally hit differently now in Overwatch 2 and it's got some people asking, why? About halfway where his health bar is above his head, about halfway up there. That's head hitbox. Oh, that's kind of crazy. What? I feel all warm inside. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this since we're gonna play Overwatch after I finish this video. We're gonna try this. We're gonna try. I'm actually genuinely curious after what what was this? Five days? Season's been out. Season's been out a week, because today's Tuesday is video pack now, like Wednesday. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna try it. I wanna see after a week what it looks like. <laughs> the scaled up projectiles are generous to say the least. So what's Blizzard's explanation? Well, this is where it gets really interesting because their answer is that they want fights to last longer and to rely more on counterplay and less on healing. But I, I think that's actually a W move for the game. I think you would rather have your game taking more mental and having a strategy than, you know, just kind of brainless left click, right click. That's how it works. Because look at, let's take an example of where this also applies in other games. First person shooters. If we go to Call of Duty versus Counter-Strike, which one of those has a bigger esports following? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be Counter-Strike and it, it's not even close. Let me tell you, it's, it's not even close. CDL is on its way out the door. Like the games that require just, you know, some brain power at the high level, but not necessarily needed at the low level. It's perfect because all of your casuals have their, you know, it, trust me, if somebody downloads Overwatch and they go in there and they do a whole bunch of damage, you know, and they're 
the, the fights just feel really good. Like, you're not dying all the time, but you're not necessarily just doing crazy, crazy damage and all these insane numbers like you are. That's a lot more enjoyable. So that will bring a lot more people back. CSL is not to... Yeah, I mean... Like I said, I think that's the perfect example. Call of Duty on the way out. Counter-Strike, the game's been out for how long? And the pro scene is bigger than almost anything else. Like, it's... You want to have people use their brain in order to be great at the game, but not necessarily have to use their brain to just entry and have fun. Wait a sec. Making headshots way easier doesn't accomplish that goal on its own. It's just a piece in a bigger puzzle. Firstly, heroes have more health across the board than ever before, and these increases are significant. On top of that, every- Yeah, but we also have to remember now that if you get hit by a DPS, if I take a bullet from a soldier or laser, whatever the hell he technically shoots, the healing effectiveness that you are receiving is 25% less. So in theory, yes, they have more health, but if they're getting shot by a DPS person, they're not getting healed as much. So it almost kind of balances itself out. I think the people complaining about the health pool, like, I think it's just an L take. Like, I think they did balance that out with the damage reduction on healing. Now, when tank players are sitting there complaining on, you know, TikTok and YouTube about they feel as though there should be something on your UI to let you know that you're under going to be under healing reduction. Because if you get hit from a, if you get hit from a Kirigo, you're not going to take 25% damage reduction. But if you get by Soldier, Sojourn, Cassie, all those kinds of things, you do. So I do agree with that. I think they need like just something on the UI for people to know. But overall, I think that's why the number, the health pool is so big because of that damage reduction. And I think it's a good idea. Every hero in the game can now passively heal if they avoid damage for five seconds with supports taking. That's also why I think it's a good idea. The passive heal for every single roll now. Great. I think that's good for the game. That's a hot take, and I know a lot of people are like, no, that's a support job to heal. I, I think a passive heal, great for the game. Only half that amount of time. And maybe most critically, damage roll heroes now apply a minus 20% healing received debuff. 20%, so every time I said 25%, that's all me. To targets that they damage. To summarize, the devs want fights to take slightly longer. And the idea here is to emphasize things like target selection and counterplay in these fights. They want damage to be more consistent instead of people getting burst down immediately. But in order to accommodate that, they had to adjust healing and pocketing as well. Where it gets weird is where Blizzard starts talking about the consistency of hitting shots. I'll admit that I've only ever played this game on a PC with a 144Hz monitor but I don't think hit registration was ever truly a big problem for this game, at least from my perspective. If anything, I'd say- Um, I think it depends on what kind of level you're at, right? Because somebody like me, who again, silver, gold, I had a couple of friends that hit plat that I played with. Yeah, we're not really noticing too much of like, are my shots hitting? Because we're not like that. We have a couple hundred hours in the games. We don't have a couple tens of thousands. But I do definitely remember a lot of people at- um high elo like you look at like flash j3 emog like there were a lot of people talking about hits not necessarily registering and things being weird <laughs> was making the projectile size absolutely massive the fix i don't know but i see what they were trying to do say it's better than a lot of other shooters that move at this speed it's not like i've never complained about anything but credit where it's due it was pretty good regardless it might be easier to hit someone with these new bigger projectiles but everyone's got more health as well. Healing is now worse at saving people who are being focused, but every player has an option to get some health back if they can just catch a breather. Regardless of how the game looks, Overwatch is fast paced at high levels. It's got a lot of verticality and for players coming from new games, there's a learning curve. He's not wrong. There's a huge learning curve with Overwatch compared to almost any other FPS. When you're playing almost any FPS, you're almost only ever, your crosshair is only ever going vertical and horizontal. Once you're, once you're in high elo, when you're playing counter strikes and Valorant and these kinds of things, you're, you're holding angles. You, you know where someone's head is going to be around the corner. Overwatch, dude, when they, when you hear Genji pop that ult, he could be up here. He could be over there. Like it, it is definitely a huge learning curve. I, I 100% agree with that. Um, with that, but I would argue that in a lot of ways, like movement is a skill uh, in the game. So, 100%. I think movement's a lot of skill in a lot of these esports games. 100%.
you look at the way that uh, a global elite moves in counter strike it's it's a lot more quick it's a lot more efficient than obviously gold novas and all those kinds of guys say so, any game movement i think that's a good thing too you want to have movement be a learning curve you want to have bunny hops you want to have uh what do they used to call them? gm moira jumps where you would just be able to go from like one insane thing to the other because you knew when to hit your space bar i think that's good for the game i wonder how much of this you don't want it broken to the point where it's op and it's absolutely just stupid but you do want to have movement be some kind of learning curve and be able to be improved on this will affect something like good movement you know so does this hitbox change help people who are trying to learn the game for example or who only play it very casually probably the way that it's phrased by game director Aaron Keller makes me think that it might be part of the intent. But that may not sit well with some players who could feel that many such changes have catered to that specific audience. Do you know why it doesn't really matter though? I forget who it was. I think it was Emog I saw say this. Them making the projectiles bigger does not matter. Because, do you want to know why? Because top 500 players weren't missing their shots anyway. So you can sit here and make the projectiles bigger and make little Andes like us feel better because we're hitting more shots. But at the end of the day, those top players, they weren't missing regardless. So it, it, does, it doesn't really matter. It's a, it's a net positive for the game. The real truth about these changes is that many of them are dramatic. The health changes are huge and the roll passives are pretty important too particularly that DPS one that reduces healing by 20%. A comparison of Zenyatta's Discord orb to this roll passive is unavoidable, with Zenyatta's orb giving a 25% increase to damage taken. But at the end of the day, it just helps put into perspective that damage dealers will need to pick their targets well to succeed. Yeah, definitely. Let's not, let's not even troll. Zen's been absolutely massive in Overwatch 2, his Discord orb people have been saying need to rework forever. And with the damage reduction and all that stuff, yeah, I mean, Zen's, Zen is going to be in every single top 500 supports rotation. I guarantee it. Like, it forces the player, uh, the support player, to use the cooldown sooner, which gives you an opportunity to then capitalize it uh, on a play. Which, you know, honestly, that theory makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I think they, I didn't think about that. Aaron's kind of cooking there. Jake pointed out that things not only move quickly in this game, they instantly change direction and target dummy clips won't help us understand whether the game is better or not. Even if the clips are a lot, we need to see how this fits together. And so far, he likes it. Farrah got a rework. This, this was something I was saying too. Like I saw a lot of people making these clips talking about, oh, the projectiles are busted or oh, it's stupid. And I totally expected that when I got into the game, I was gonna be hitting ridiculous amounts of shots even for being a scrub. I, I don't feel, and this is just me personally, this could be an L take to a lot of people and, and that's fine, but I, I don't notice too much of a difference on the hitboxes. I, I just don't, or the projectile size. I just, I really don't. It's not, I don't think it's that deep. Work that looks pretty interesting to me, but beyond that, it was pretty much a light touch on the rest of the heroes in the game since, well, lots of other stuff got changed too. But this patch gave us a lot of stuff besides clips, and one of those things might be the best ranked system I've ever seen. Sure, there's finally mana for the competitive faithful like the new Jade weapons. Finally, a new competitive skin, and your rank will be adjusted more frequently now too. There's now also a new top rank called Champion, which is supposed to be even more prestigious than the old Grandmaster. And on top of that, queuing restrictions with your friends have been reduced, so that should help to cut down on some of the smurfing we see. I think this was a W too. I, I'm not sure the ins and outs of what players can uh, queue with what in certain roles and where your ranks are and stuff like that, but I heard a lot of the, the big names in the Overwatch content creation start talking about how they can finally play with their friends again. I think that's a good thing too. And it sounds like it also somehow combated smurfing. So if you can combat smurfing and still have more people playing with their friends, because gaming is always more fun when you're playing with your buddies. W. I think I think that's a win. I think it's a net positive. In the game. But telling players the detailed reasons that their rank changed. Okay. Uh I don't I don't ever remember seeing this. Uh oh, okay. This is actually just them kind of giving like a breakdown. I see. Yeah, this is a W. I mean 
I think when they had the whole win, what was it, five or lose 17 or something like that, I thought that was so stupid. I think that was the worst rank system I've ever seen. But being able to see how you're adjusting and why you're adjusting almost every single game, again, this is a W change. This is a positive. That immediately puts this rank system near the top. And it feels like all these things together mean a potential surge of interest in ranked. Now, I'm not a game developer, but I get the feeling that in the past, this kind of thing would be treated with some skepticism. I mean, at the end of the day, why does the player need to know all of these things that affected their rank? Well, it turns out that players that get invested in competitive modes do actually care about the reasons that the number that they care so much about goes up or down. Of course. If you derank, you want to know why you derank. That's why, like, for example, Valorant does that really well, that if you are top boarding and you're absolutely carrying your team, but your team gets smoked, you don't lose as much RR. I think that's a W system because it does still, if you truly are in your wrong rank, it will even out because you will be ranking up quicker if you're carrying on the Ls or even if you're carrying on the Ws, you get a lot more RR per match in Valorant if you're top board versus the bottom. And I think that's way, the way it should be. You're always going to have data outliers. You're always going to have the person who dropped, they who went 25 and 5, but because top board went 35 and 7, they didn't get as much RR. And that's okay. Of course, that person's going to be pissed off that game that they only got 12 RR versus 20. But it's, again, it's a net positive. The people that are going to be mad about that aren't going to make up the majority, and that's okay. And finally, Overwatch 2 is going to give that to the player base. But do we really want it? You think you do, but you don't. I'm mostly messing around, but I think there is a dimension to this where some people might actually have been happier not knowing. At the end of the day, it's good that the information is available. To me, at least, the- I think anytime devs make changes to the game, they should, be, they should communicate it as best they can. I think anytime companies start doing things like behind the scenes where they have hidden patches and stuff like that, I think that's garbage. Almost all the time. Obviously, if it's something stupid like, oh, uh, the texture on Junker Town needs changed. Oh, okay. We, <laughs> I don't, I don't need to see that in the patch notes. But when you're literally sitting there, like adding things, you know, putting uh, health packs in one spot versus another, like that, that stuff absolutely should be communicated. Same with the projectile size, the rank changes. Like, yeah, I, I think they should communicate as much as they can. I think it's a better look for the game as well. System looks great, and my coworker Brendan, who was a huge help sharing his insights for this video also said that he's excited for Ranked for the first time in a long time. The patch adds a rework of the Junkertown map as well. I think this was a map that over time people started to slowly dislike. And the new map has a night version as well. I used to hate Junkertown, dude. I never even played Overwatch 2 that much. I'm, I'm probably like 300 some hours. I hated Junkertown. But now with all of like the corner cover over here, I mean, it's, I, I now I love Junkertown. Now every time I get it, I'm like, oh, cool. like. Finally, I can play this map and I don't hate it. And all they had to do was add a busted house here, a little fire there. I think they had something back here already, but yeah, it's a W. Well, and it's looking pretty good. There's lots of other small quality of life type stuff, like new crosshairs or being able to commend your friend. Like some heart crosshair is a W. Sometimes your friends do carry the game. I have a friend named Zhang who's insane at wrecking ball. And when he carries my horrible Ana play, I should be able to recognize him, right? It's good. And listen, despite how wild the clips look, it kind of seems like- Were you not able to endorse a party member before? I feel like you could do it once, uh, like, once in a while. I knew I could only endorse my, like, party member, like, I don't know if it- Was it once a day or was it once every, like, 12 hours, 6 hours, something like that? But I, I didn't know. If I can do that at the end of every match, Luke's about to have a, a 5 endorsement rating this patch has players excited to try it out and see where this whole thing leads. I tried it myself last night just briefly and frankly it feels pretty good but the Zenyatta orb is very strong. It feels better than ever. Give oh I'm a hundred. It, tonight like I said tonight on Overwatch I'm queuing all on stream tonight. I've got tank support DPS I'm, I'm queuing all tonight and if I get if I get support it's gonna be Zen play 100% that the transition to Overwatch 2 has had plenty of missteps and 5v5 wasn't exactly loved by everybody, this patch represents a chance for a new future for this game. I'm in the minority here. The reason, like, I never played Overwatch 1 was because of 6v6. I thought having, like, two tanks, like, it just, it seemed like too much. 
it seemed like too OP. So when I saw that they went to five and it was only one tank, I, I loved it. I, I absolutely loved that. I thought it was a good idea. And I know a lot of people are hot about that. They still think 6v6 is better, but I, I would have never, I probably would have never touched Overwatch 2 if it was still 6v6. It feels different for sure. And sometimes change is needed. But whether it's the change that this community wants right now remains to be seen. Through a series of rabbit holes, I was reminded of a song that was in a Persona 3 like spinoff project that has a rap track in it. And I just want you to imagine that you're like watching like you're you're maybe you're at like a live venue and somebody's rapping and the the first line out of their mouth is check it out i'm in the house like carpet what does that mean to you like i that's my question to you in this end board if someone raps i'm in the house like carpet how are they in the house because to me i have carpet in a couple places in my house but they're in different places hmm. i'm gonna move past that one uh it's just because carpet's in Carpet's in your house, usually. It's just saying he's in the house like carpet. You know what I mean? It's okay. Um, let's see. I'm shocked to realize people still play Overwatch. I got a couple of these comments across TikTok, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. That Overwatch does very well. Even before this season, it is one of the highest monthly competitive played games. Like Overwatch is, even regardless of what people think, it's insane. The numbers, because Over Overwatch is so big internationally. Like the Overwatch World Cup and things like that, like they are insane. Overwatch is still, it, it was nowhere near dying, no matter how much people got, get upset. Uh, negative 20% healing received when hit by a damage hero. That's a Paladin's mechanic. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Blizzard really saw Valve CS2 hitbox bug and launched and said we can do so much better. Oh my God, I'm sorry. No, nothing will be worse than CS2's hitbox bug on launch there's uh, there's almost nothing overwatch could do that could make me feel like it's it's worse but yeah this is a w video i'm gonna link it here uh definitely anybody that keeps up with like esports like your heavy hitting esports games follow them give them the sub that's good let's get some overwatch going